we went cold turkey. We just said one day, no more diapers. And so taking all that information from different mom friends, I was like, okay, let me sit down. Let me read this book and see what it's about. Mm -hmm. And I did take a little while reading it. Yes. I think I want to say I took at least a good week um, to prep myself because the book really talks about how you should be in the right mindset to potty train. Kids sense fear. If you're scared to do it, your child's going to be scared to try it. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Tijani Musa. And I'm Yasmin Musa. And this is how we're doing it. Welcome to our How We're Doing It. Here we share stories about our journey and experiences of being first generation college graduates, our family, buying our first home, moving across the country, and living a debt free lifestyle. We do so in an authentic, fun, and educational way to help other first generation immigrants with similar paths. So, what's cooking today? Today we're talking about potty training. A party, 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 party like a rock star. <laughs> this is a very relevant topic for us because we just literally went through this. Yes, yes. Like, what, three months ago? Yep. Yeah, and just for reference, our daughter is two, and we officially decided at two years and one month, well, I officially decided you didn't really have much of a say. <laughs> <laughs> you just followed my lead. Yep. But <clears throat> we decided, you know, we wanted to really commit to it and give it a try. And Jasmine is a rock star. And she did amazing. And now we are potty trained during the day. Yes. She does wear pull-ups at, for naps. Okay. But most of the time they're dry. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And then at night, I mean, it's a really long time. So mm -hmm. at night, she does wear diapers. Yep. So just a reset. This is about potty training, a two-year-old. And if you are in that journey in your life where you feel like you're, you're ready, because you have to be ready. You have to be on, on the go to do it. And this is the episode for you. So for us, two years old, two years later, Yasmin was the leader, and I just followed the leader. That's right. I was the leader because I told you, I was like, I'm, I feel like I'm seeing, uh, I guess you'll call them signals. Like I'm seeing mm -hmm. signs that she may be ready. And I brought those up to you. Like, for example, she was, when she needed to go number two, she would go hide. Yes. She'd get really quiet and just kind of go hide in the corner, do her thing and then come back. And that's a sign that she she's ready. Like she mm -hmm. recognizes that pooping is something that's not. That it's not. Some, a, it's, 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 it's a not, private thing. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a something that you thing. do in front of a bunch of people. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, lots of squatting anytime she needed to go. So I was like, I feel like she's ready, but I wanted to make sure that I was prepared. So in order for me to prepare, mm -hmm. I started by reading the oh crap potty training mm -hmm. book and it's um i thought it was a great read i actually bought it at a yard sale it was like 25 cents but i had it on my cart um on like amazon and i told myself you know oh like i'm gonna buy it when the time is right because i had seen other moms recommend it and then I found it at the yard sale for like 25 cents. So I was like, oh, this is my time. <laughs> that sounds like a good deal. Yeah. But I think we should go back because our potty training journey really started way before she became two. Yeah. Yeah. Can you walk us a little bit through that? Yep. I can definitely walk you through that. Uh, so our potty training started way back uh, when Jaslyn was about six months old. We decided that, and we're sharing this because the journey is going to be different, all right? Maybe a lot of people will see it as we are more on the extreme side of things for starting that early. I think what you were starting to say is every kid is different at the beginning, right? Right. You were starting to say that every kid is different, and so you could call us extreme by starting something early, mm -hmm. but you have to remember that any new skill is going to take time to master. 
and it takes practice. And so breaking it down into small steps is the best way to do it. Yes. And so I have a friend. My friend's name is Rachel. And Rachel has a son that is exactly nine months older than Jasmine. Uh-huh. And when we, you know, we're moms, we're just talking. And she shared with me that she had started her son on potty training as young as I believe six months or maybe even earlier. She said as soon as he could sit up, she started having having him sit on the potty. And she just gave me some tips, you know, tips like, okay, sit her on the potty after naps. And, it, you know, the little like potties that you're going to sit next to the actual toilet and, uh-huh. you know, have her see you go, let her go, give her a little bit of time there, you know, make it fun, read to her sing to her, play with her. Um, you know, she suggested if, if anything actually hits the potty, whether it's pee, poo, whatever, you make the biggest deal out of it. You cheer, you clap, you, you reward whatever you do. You want to make a big deal about it. Oh, yeah. So we definitely took that and we rolled with it. Uh-huh. The Jamil way. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> is the only way <laughs> well one, for one, us it really worked for so. party training it worked for us yes it really did uh-huh. um so she's been sitting since about six months uh-huh. and consistently after naps yes and after sleep she's sitting on the toilet yes we did get to a point once she was comfortable standing up that she would she started getting up out of the seat so uh-huh. that's when we brought in the inserts to put on top of the toilet yes and that worked well for to keep her on the toilet, you know, but obviously you have to stay and watch her and make sure, you know, she's not going to jump off or anything. Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it was it was natural for her. Uh-huh. She was going to pee um, sometimes. Most of the time, I want to say she went number two in the potty. Yes. But we did have a couple instances where she was still going in the diaper. Yes. This is before potty training. Yes, this is right. before potty training. And this right. went up until, you know, she turned 1, she mm-hmm. turned even 2. Yes. And she's still wearing diapers, you know, she's she's sitting in the potty and practicing that uh-huh. after nap time, after sleep time. And Finally, we're at two and I'm like, okay, what now? Right. Because, you know, she has a good foundation. She's comfortable sitting on the potty. She's comfortable doing her business in the potty. Yes. Um, And, you know, but this point she's using the ins- insert. So technically she's doing it on the toilet, you mm-hmm. know, which makes things less messy. Yes. And so I was like, what's the next step? And that's where that, oh, crap book came in i reached out to a friend who i knew had just gone through potty training Uh and i was like hey what are your tips um and she was like that book (laughs) then i also reached out to rachel and she was like we went cold turkey we just said one day no more diapers and so taking all that information from different mom friends i was like okay let me sit down. Let me read this book and see what it's about. Uh-huh. And I did take a little while reading it. Yes. I think I want to say I took at least a good week um, to prep myself because the book really talks about how you should be in the right mindset to potty train. Kids sense fear. If you're scared to do it, your child's going to be scared to try it. Uh-huh. So you need to make sure that you're in the right headspace. Another big thing that the book mentions is that you really need to prioritize making time for it. So it's not one of those things that's going to be like a quick three days and your potty train, like the the three day potty training over the weekend method. That's not what we did. That I, I don't know if it works personally. I've never tried it for my daughter. It took longer than three days, and she had a lot of practice beforehand. Remember, right. every kid is different. Right. So the main thing she says is you need to, out of your schedule, you need to take at least one full week yeah. where you are fully dedicated to potty training. Yes. You're not doing anything except worrying about potty training. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like a lot, 
But if you think about it, one week for pretty much a lifetime of bladder control Mm -hmm. and pee and poo inside the potty, Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that much. (laughs) No, I don't I don't think that's too much to give. So being a teacher, I that's one thing that I gotta love. Right. Is that we get nice breaks. And so I had Thanksgiving break off and I the whole week I was off and I told to Johnny, we're just gonna go for it. Mm-hmm. And I just followed the leader. Yeah, that's another big thing though. <laughs> I was the one that was absorbing all the information, taking it in. So I told you, this is what we're gonna do. Yes. And this is how we're gonna do it. And this is how you're gonna support me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in the whole process, the the child's supposed to go from being clueless about them peeing Mm -hmm. to realizing, okay, wait, I'm peeing. And then to eventually getting to the point where they're going to say, okay, I have to go pee. Mm -hmm. And it's broken down into different blocks. Um, Not days, blocks. So block one, we were home with Jasmine all day. Mm -hmm. I was off work. You Mm -hmm. were working from home. Mm -hmm. She was naked all day. Right. No clothes on. We kept the potty as close to us as we could. So we were hanging out in our living room space, kitchen mm-hmm. area. Yep. And that's where we kept the potty the whole time. Right. Um, accessible to her. We, we used both like the toilet insert and then like the potty nearby as well. Right. Um, so you're going to take the diaper off. One thing that you we did is which the book recommends is pretending you th- you're throwing away the diapers, like no more diapers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and just make it fun. You know, I, I go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and one thing that you also did throughout the process is you would talk her through it. Mm-hmm. We are going to take this diaper because you are learning how to potty train. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're a big girl now. You don't need to use this diaper anymore. We're going to put this diaper away. We're going to trash it. Mm-hmm. You're walking her through the process and talking her through it so that she understands what's going on. Right. Even, um, you know, different methods do it different ways. Like, oh, mm-hmm. sit them there until she goes. Right. We never did that. Um, another one I've heard is... Um, well, no, I think that is the main one. Like you set them there until they do something, but we we just didn't. Yeah, because that's not the way we went about it. Yeah, because remember, Jasmine is already she's already been using mm-hmm. the toilet. Oh, I remember yeah, what the so, other one is. The mm-hmm. other one is like you take them every like fifteen or twenty minutes or uh-huh. a certain after a certain amount of time. Yeah, for Jasmine. So the first day, we just focused on learning her cues. What right. what cues does she have that signal that she needs to go to the potty? Right. Um, for her, she'd start wiggling around mm-hmm. or she'd make a little face. Mm-hmm. But remember, she's been practicing this forever. For a long time. And so... <laughs> And so so we know very, everything. <laughs> that very first day, she started saying "popo." Yeah, yeah. And that meant it's time to go to the potty, mm-hmm. even if she wasn't doing number two. Right. Popo for her was potty. Right. And so, you know, during that whole time, I was like you said, just communicating with her. Like if we were gonna go to the bathroom, I you know I'd notice. Okay, she just drank a couple ounces of water or juice. Yeah. That means it, she's going to have to go in the next fifth, about 15, 20 minutes might be cutting it. Yes. Um, so I'd say, okay, come on, it's time to go pee. Mm-hmm. Whenever I went, I'd let her come inside with me and see what I was doing. Right. Um, and then if she, if she does something in the potty, you just say, you know, yay, like you did it. Teach her to say, I did it. Of Jasmine, course. She, she does a great job. Saying, she is I did good. It. Yep, she is good. She, yeah, we make a big deal out of it. We, yeah. we make a party in the bathroom because it's a party training. Mm-hmm. So it's a party in the bathroom. So, yeah, <laughs> if it, it, it's, it's amazing when, when she actually goes, how she gets so excited. Like, I did it. Like, I did you can that. tell her energy. <laughs> yeah. And she'll start. To, so we do a little cheer, too, from yeah. back in our RA days. Oh, yeah. It goes G-O-O-D-J-O-B. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> um, and Say, she, I did a good job. She, good job. She'll she'll do it with us. Yeah. It's, it's adorable. Um, and, you know, 
that very first day, I mean, clearly every child is different and it's not going to be perfect. You have to be prepared for accidents to happen. Right. But it's all about how you react. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had probably about four pee accidents, maybe about mm -hmm. about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then how many I want to say we had one poop accident that first day. Right. Right. Yeah. And when, when the accidents happen, it's, you know, you just have to say, it's okay. You're learning. You pooped on the floor. Remember poop goes in the potty. Like it's all about you remaining calm and showing them that it's okay. Yep. Um, for nap and sleep on that block one, you do put them on the diaper and then tell them why. So I told her, okay, I'm putting the diaper on because you're going to nap and you're still learning You've done a good job so far, and napping is a long time. I'm going to put it on, but when you wake up, we're going to take the diaper off. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this was all for one day for us. Mm -hmm. At the end of that day, you know, at the end of the block, I should say, not the day, um, it ends with the child being naked, being able to sit to pee and poop on the potty. Mm-hmm. Um, and this block can take anywhere from one to three days. Uh, I think for Jasmine, one day was enough because remember she had been practicing this skill for right. such a long time. Right. Um, she was not new to the toilet. So she, right. she it's just a matter for, for her. It's, it's like naming the things mm -hmm. and making them practical. Okay. This is a bathroom and this is the word that you use when you need to go. Right. That's where she needed to go in terms of actually using the physical toilet. She's already ahead of the game. Yep. For so then we move on to block two, right? And remember, mm -hmm. it's broken down into blocks, not days. Because right. Block one could take anywhere from one to three days. Mm -hmm. So block two, this the child is basically going commando. They're gonna have they're gonna wear no underwear for about a month, and mm -hmm. that's because underwear mimics the tightness of diaper giving them the signal that it's okay to do it right on in the underwear and so you don't want that so you're gonna put clothes on them they're gonna wear their pants or shorts or you know if it's a girl even like a dress with no underwear on is mm -hmm. okay yeah um you still continue to provide diapers for naps and bedtime and state, you know, why it's going off and when it will come off. Right. And then just keep that praise. You just keep praising, praising them. You'll have instances. This is an important thing. You'll have instances where the kids can tell you no. If you say, come on, let's go to the potty. They're going to say no. Toddlers, that's their favorite word. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you ask them, do you want to eat? No. No. <laughs> So whenever that would happen, you with Jasmine, I'd just say, okay, I trust you're going to come tell me when you need to go. Yes. I'm going to be in the kitchen. Right. You know, just if I knew we were, you know, like, for example, if we were going on a walk, I would tell her, okay, we can leave for a walk as soon as you pee. So you just kind of try to make it as natural as you can for them, like incorporating it into your regular daily routine. Yes. Um, this is when, you know, in block one, you learned the signals and then in block two, you really, you're now you should really know the signals and then their pee patterns as well. Mm -hmm. So once they take some liquid, how long does it normally take for them to go potty after that? Yes. In we're going to move on to the next block. So it's block three. So during this time, you're just watching and prompting, right. watching for those signals and then prompting them if they need to go. This is when you start practicing your small outings. So mm -hmm. you're going to go around the block, mm -hmm. maybe to pick up the mail mm -hmm. or go to the store to pick up one item. Mm -hmm. And during this time, we'd always emphasize like, OK, Jasmine, you need to pee before we leave the house. Mm -hmm. And... Just be prepared, you know, bring an extra outfit. If you're worried about getting the car seat or the car stained, bring, you can bring a cloth diaper or a towel. Mm -hmm. You're going to want baby wipes. And then you do need to bring the potty chair or the insert with you wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. So 
we actually have we have two inserts in our home well yes, yes in our home one upstairs one downstairs and then we have another insert at grandma's house mm -hmm. because we go there very often right um and then we have one potty which is in our one bathroom Family downstairs car. yeah and then we have a travel potty mm -hmm. and the travel potty we it's for traveling we keep yes. that one in the car right and you want to make sure you have access to that potty or the insert wherever you're going for your child right because if they say if they give you the signal which jasmine signal was popo you we had to we didn't work hard for us to not listen to her when she's right. saying that even if right. we're driving right so we'd pull over and take her to the bathroom and she's done that several times yes <laughs> they will yes, do it <laughs> they will once they start getting better you can plan longer outings yeah you know like i mean <laughs> that first week i remember you know if she needed to go she would say okay popo and i would drop everything and take her sprint. to the bathroom and sprint to the bathroom, <laughs> right? Which kind of became like a game for her. Like yeah. She loved the whole ordeal. of When you like, sprint to her, she sprint the other way. Yeah, <laughs> she loved the whole ordeal of like, we're going to run to the bathroom. Yeah, and my mama is running toward me to right, grab me. Right, she got better. She d definitely got better from that. <laughs> yeah, for me, when she says popo, I said, okay, meet me in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm not chasing you because when you come to her, she runs the other way. I said, okay. If you need to popo, why are you running the opposite way to the... So I just... When she says popo, I say, okay, I'm, I'm going like, to okay, work. Bye. Yep. Meet me in the bathroom. Yeah. It if she really needs to go, she'll come meet us there when yeah. she's ready. Yeah. yeah. What questions do you have? Well, I want to I want I want to add these things, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are several things that we did to make this work. And you've already covered some of them. Like... The different inserts that we have at the house, at the grandma's house, and then also the party that we have in the car. But another thing that we I wanted to add is that if you have a babysitter or somebody who watches the baby, for us, blessfully, Jasmine is being cared for by grandma. Grandma is the one that watches her when when we are at work. You have to also explain these strategies to the babysitter. Explain what's happening so that the babysitter can also have a buy-in. So she knows what to do when you're not there because they are the extension of you. All the efforts that you've put in in this party training exercise, they have to execute it when you're not around. So you have to be able to explain things to them as well. They have You have their buy-in so that both you are in the same page on the same page to try to help that baby. So I wanted to add that. Yeah, no, that's really important because I blocked out that week, right? And during that week, my goal was to get her to be able to do this as independently as possible so that when grandma started watching her again, when I returned to work in a week, um, that grandma saw progress and bought into it, right? Like right. you, I wanted my mom to see results. Right. And that's exactly what Jasmine did. You know, we, I think by that weekend we traveled to their home, mm -hmm. to my parents' home. Um, probably it's a short outing really because right. they're right down the street. From Four us. minutes away. Yep. But you know, we were there for a long time. And during that whole time, Jasmine was not wearing any diapers. Right. She was verbalizing when she needed to go to the potty. And my mom saw, saw that. So I just, you know, as we were sitting there, I just said, hey, tomorrow, you know, normally after she drinks liquid, she's going to need to go in the next like 15 minutes or so. Right. Always take her, you know, after she wakes up from her nap. Mm -hmm. Take, You know, she's still going to wear her diaper or pull up, you know, for her sleep. Yes. Because she's still learning. Yes. And it went great. Yes. It yes. went really well. I came back like that. Those first couple of days that I went back to work, I mm -hmm. came back and I'd ask my mom, how did it go? And she's like, oh, it went well. She did. She did her business in the potty. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we had overall, I think we had two or three poop accidents. Yes. Um, one was when she was completely naked. And yes. then we had two when she was wearing just her pants right um 
by the end of week two, I did put underwear on her. Right. Now, I don't know if that that was a good choice because we still had like one poop accident after the underwear went off. Do you remember? I was like, I'm just throwing the underwear out because I don't yeah. want to wash it. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember, and and it threw you off too. And I think it was you, like one or two, yeah. yeah. And then and I, I thought said, it's okay. I thought I was like, okay, maybe I rushed into the underwear. Maybe yeah. I should have given her a little bit more time. But mm-hmm. you know, every baby's different. Every kid is gonna have their own yeah. uniqueness about them. So right. one big thing I kept telling myself is like, no, like she's okay. She's learned the foundation. It's right. small accidents. Right. Right. So I have a question for you, though. Mm-hmm. In, uh, for example, we've done all this work, right? And Jasmine has been party trained as of uh, November. Mm-hmm. And let's say seven months down the road and you started noticing like regression and all of a sudden she started going mm-hmm. number one or number two in her underwear. Do you have any tips for parents or new parents? If situations like that were to happen in the book, I read that um, most of the time there's got to be like a root problem that's like causing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like whether that be like a move um, or bringing in a new family member Mm -hmm. or separation, separation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any of those things could trigger such, you know, like a regression. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is like finding the root of the problem and then finding, okay, look at the pattern again. Is it happening at a specific time Mm -hmm. of the day? Mm -hmm. Is it, or is it all day? You know, you really want to narrow down, okay, when's it happening? And then take your kid back through those steps that you did. Block one, you know, where we're command, uh, sorry, where we're, Nike all day, block two, commando, you know, it's obviously not going to take as long because your child already has the foundation, Mm -hmm. but they might just need those little reminders to get them back on the path again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And another thing that I also wanted to add, um, as soon as they started going in the toilet or in the, in the, in the party, just like what Yasmin said, start introducing them to follow all the steps she mentioned and start once you start introducing them to underwear what we've noticed with Jasleen trust me no kid like to go on their um underwear because with Jasleen even when she's wearing diapers to sleep when she wakes up the next morning when you pick her up from the 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 crib she walks like a like a like a penguin <laughs> because her diaper was is so heavy and wet she doesn't know how she doesn't want to walk in them. Yeah. So the truth is that once they figure out that they need they they've been potty trained, they are not going to want to use they they are not going to want to go on their diapers or on their on the on the on the underwear. So you don't have to worry too much about it once once you follow the the right steps and you teach them what to do. So that's that's at least that gives you a, a little bit of confidence of of what to come. Which nighttime potty training is not something that we have um, really placed a big emphasis on. And right. that's because one age, you know, I right. she's still young. I think I feel like we have time. And then the other thing, too, is we would have to wake up, wake her up in the middle of the night to right. take her to the potty and then put her back down. And to be right. 100 percent honest with everyone, I love my sleep. The yeah. last thing I want to do is get up to take my kid to potty in the middle of the night. So <laughs> would I rather spend a couple extra hundred dollars a year just to keep buying pull-ups? Yeah. <laughs> At this point, if it means I'm going to sleep more, I'm, I'm okay doing that. Yeah, but by the time they go to bed in the evening, you have like a few minutes of your time. And so for you to also dedicate time in the middle of the night to wake them up. Hey, if you are the type of parent that does that, power to you. Power to you. But for us, we would uh, delay that type of action. I think her bladder will get to a point where it grows enough Yeah. that we don't need it, you know? Yeah. Our five-year-old is now at a point where he doesn't need it. Even for us, even if we have to go at night, we try not to go at night because we don't want to wake up. 
I hate waking up. <laughs> then I can't go back to sleep sometimes. Exactly. So anything else that you want to add to this? Yeah. So last thing that I want to mention is, you know, in this specific book, the author doesn't recommend using like a sticker chart or any of those type of reward systems where when they go, you reward them with that. Um, even snacks, she doesn't recommend that. She says like just the praise should be enough, you know, but every kid is different. So mm -hmm. you have to find what works for your kid and just go with it. Yeah. As Yasmin said, <laughs> we've, we've repeated that word. Every kid is different. Kids learn differently. Kids grasp a uh, different concept differently. So just be patient. Understand that the kid is going to understand what's going on and they're going to catch on. And so just be patient with them. And if you're in the middle of trying to teach your toddler how to potty, how to pee in the potty, <laughs> why am I not able to talk? If you're in the middle of trying to teach your toddler how to use the potty, just remember to be patient Remember to be in the right mindset. It starts with you. They can tell if you're insecure. And then pick whatever method you're going to go with and stick with it. Remember, consistency is key. It is not going to happen overnight. You need to dedicate the time and you need to be consistent with it so that your child knows that this is something that's important for you and for them. Thank you for listening to another episode of How We're Doing It. We want to hear from you. Contact us at hwdipodcast at gmail.com or leave a comment. If you like the show, consider subscribing in order to get notified of new episodes. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again on the next episode. Kiss the mama. Bye-bye.